introduction to patterns one of the key elements of uh, the software design paradigms curriculum uh, and uh, we will be visiting to the introductory theory of uh, the patterns there is a 30 around years history for patterns in 1987 ward cunningham man came to bay started working with the small talk now there was a conference held in 87 which was called as upsala conference and uh, they wrote up the paper using pattern languages for uh, the object oriented programs now the thing was that at, at that time the object oriented uh, programming and techniques were not that much mature and after that jim copelin or shortly referred as co began compiling catalogs of c++ idioms now idioms are then the kind of and patterns and they were published them as a book advanced c++ programming styles and idioms now you can find this book online also advanced c++ programming styles and idioms likewise it was a movement from an imperative paradigm to object oriented paradigm and from 90 to 92 various members of gang of four there were four people involved in uh, working around with design patterns that's why it was named as gang of four and then they discuss about the patterns as mentioned by bruce anderson and uh, in 93 again came back and grady bush sponsored mountain retreat in colorado and you all know that grady bush was the one of the founder elements of the uh, uml as a modeling language grady bush howard jacobson and jim ramba now there was a uh, book design patterns published by the gang of four and then the current term uh, pattern is derived from uh, writing the architect likewise uh, building an architecture means for christopher alexander notes on uh, synthesis of form the oregon experiment a pattern language the timeless way of building now therefore a pattern is a quality without a name now just shortly telling you about pattern pattern is a, a solution offered for recurring problem it's a solution offered for recurring problem so uh, it has essence of living and useful things that is harmony comfort completeness wholeness resilience adaptability so alive and sated the patterns must be alive right so that it can work around with the quality and you all know that quality is indirect so the patterns which will be based around on certain pattern language there are variety of approaches in writing down the pattern languages which were been multifaceted now multifaceted means it should conquer both the fr's as well as the nfr's and then quality is one of the nfr's so we have to work around with an timeless kind of an way why so why so is the differentiating space that is piecemeal growth that is one after another that is smallest level of increments we should see in the patterns and in the pattern languages which uh, works around on the principle of abstraction moving next what is a pattern likewise i have mentioned with the previous slide ending point that is the pattern is based around on abstractions that is keeping the needed one and discarding the rest a pattern is an abstraction from a concrete form which keeps recurring in specific non arbitrary context so therefore it is something which is uh, geared around uh, 
solving the problems in the design. Now design, why not analysis? There are analysis patterns also. There are design patterns also. For uh, implementation uh, specific things, we are using EDOMs. And there are patterns for user interface design and uh, what not. And uh, there are, you know, de facto standards that the industry applies, likewise model view controller. So one has to consider the forces. That is every pattern should address two things, that is structure and behavior. Apart from structure and behavior, it should focus on, on how I can create, how I can create the elements of the solution. So creational, structural and behavioral are the three important factors or issues that must be addressed by a pattern. So, uh, it is a conceptual handle which gives essential insight to facilitate the information of a pattern. So, a pattern is a named nugget of instructive information that captures structure and uh, the family of proven solutions and combining these solutions to address the forces. Forces, uh, you can consider them as a push that has been happening from the client side. A pattern which is uh, which should convey the context, right? For which particular context you may apply the pattern. So this was just the definition part. We will continue again. So each pattern has got three part rule. What is that three part rule? Context, problem and solution. So Indeed, you have used this particular pattern that is context, problem and a solution in working around with the requirement definition doc. But here, when it comes to the solution, the solution has got a context, it has got a problem and it has got a solution. But the basis for the patterns in design has got a background of analysis. So therefore, the element in the world will have the context. The context is very useful in working around with the forces to resolve them. And as an element language, a pattern is an instruction. Instructions for what? What kind of unspatial configuration can be needed over and again? So therefore, it is the thing which happens in the world, which uh, goes up with three things create, structure, and behavior, which are the significant key elements to make the things available and alive. Next is the in software pattern, that is pattern night, Jim Copeland writes. I like to relate this definition to dress patterns. I could tell you how to make a dress by specifying the root of scissors through a piece of cloth in terms of angles and lengths of cut. So, what does the meaning Pope wanted to tell us is that one size doesn't fit to all. One size doesn't fit to all. So, therefore, an cloth, a piece of cloth, which is having no dimensions, requires to be cut. Cut on the basis of what? On the basis of the principle of abstraction, that is keeping the needed one and discarding the rest. So is it all that that the abstraction makes up the things for the patterns? The answer of that is no. When you try to structure the design, design patterns, structures, the things with the help of hierarchies. So abstraction to hierarchies now its realization. So, realization is in the term of modularity, that is physical realization and encapsulation. Right at runtime, what do you do? So, Pope says that it solves the problem. It is a proven concept. It's not a theory or a speculation. It has been experimented and it has provided results also. And based on that, you can work around with the problem solving techniques. So, enhancement with any kind of a problem solving technique 
depends on the way we craft the design. So if design is absent, there is no value to whatsoever the implementation you do. It describes a relationship, relationship not amongst the system structure elements and mechanisms, but also with the related patterns. And it has got, of course, significant human components so that the comfort or quality of life should be enhanced as far as application of design pattern is concerned. Moving next, patterns are more or less they are mental images and they are guided by morphological rules. The things that we are able to perceive, visualize, we are having our own rule set to understand and interpret the things. So, if there are two people, they are observing one thing, the perception of the mental image could be different. Right? So, the same patterns in our mind are dynamic. They have force, they are generative. Right. So, constant changes are being brought up. So, mind works in that way only. So, generative patterns, they are active and dynamic. We are not uh, there with the passive and, you know, static kind of an uh, interpretation. So, uh, the recurring uh, phenomena just see to it, non-generative patterns are static and passive. Right? They describe recurring phenomena without necessarily saying how to reproduce them. So, in practice, we are using generative patterns that is leading out to the system architectures to solve a problem. But the non-generative patterns, they are excused. Right? So, Alexander, once again, Christopher Alexander, says that the instructive element of uh, the pattern is called as generativity. So, therefore, there is, a, you know, not only for the changing environment, not only for individual survival, it should be addressing the changing needs and demands. So, it should be flexible enough, it should be adaptable enough, it should be reliable and it should address emergent uh, behavior. So, emergent behavior is uh, nothing but the thing that is addressed by NFRs especially. Anti-patterns, likewise we have said about patterns and uh, anti-patterns suggest that a lesson learned. It uh, indicates the patterns do describe the bad solution to a problem which resulted in a bad situation. And those describes how to get out of a bad situation and how to proceed from there to good situation. So, what is the value of anti-patterns? Just see to it. People have worked around on design patterns, but very few have worked around on anti-patterns. That is generating a bad solution and learning out of that bad solution to how to make it good solution. So, anti-patterns are valuable. Why? Because the presence of good patterns can be understood. Are you using with generative or non-generative? That will be clarified. And then the names abstracts identifies okay, are the key aspects of common design structure. So therefore, for a particular context, you will be having the design patterns. And these design patterns should not uh, indicate any kind of a bad situation. If it ever indicates, that results in anti-pattern. So, many a times in industry, to check out the feasibility of the design solution and structure of the system, we work out on anti-patterns. Yeah? Many of the write-ups and literatures and books are there. Around the 10, I myself have visualized. But that is not part and parcel here for the discussion today. So, moving next. This is extreme important slide. Slide number 8, that is differentiating between the architectural pattern, design patterns and idiom. An architectural pattern expresses what? Fundamental structural organization or a schema for software systems. It provides set of predefined subsystems. So, therefore, 
an architectural pattern describes architecture in general in usual sense so architecture is not implementation centric but it is the design which is indicating the implementation a design pattern provides a scheme for refining the subsystems now just see to it try to understand these words okay refining subsystems or components you are already having the structure where is it present through architectural patterns it has been presented now you pick up the part and parcel of the architecture and refine it by adding sub systems or removing or rearranging them so the input to design pattern is architectural patterns now this is the way you should understand and idioms is a low level patterns specific to a programming language so therefore uh, design patterns applicable in c++ differ from design patterns applicable in java in c hash like that the changes are been there so likely what is been changed design patterns themselves they haven't changed their characteristics but idioms specific to the programming languages have been indicated so particular implementation specific aspects of the components we all remember that component is smallest piece of software which is found to be functional tested and verified so the description is slanted towards ood but uh, it can be extended to other languages also but for that rational effect has to be or effort has to be taken idioms are sometimes called as coding patterns this is very simple to remember now how we move away with the development cycle adit analysis design implementation and testing in design we come up with architecture first then apply design patterns and then apply the idioms that is coding patterns right so proceeding next overview of pattern languages individual patterns and uh, their catalogs are insufficient so they illustrate how it could be done not why it is been done in that way so you can see there uh, there are uh, you know multiple uh, patterns which are been indicated here yeah so uh, <coughs> active object Evictor, adapter, strategy, forwarder, receiver, acceptor, connector. Just see to it that the name has been given in such a kind of a way that one can understand it very, very easily. Likewise, observer. What is the job of observer? Observer doesn't participate in the scenario. Observer doesn't participate in the current scenario it doesn't perform any kind of an you know actions are together but takes a look at the thing so benefits of pattern language they talk about vocabulary they provide process for orderly resolutions of the problem and then how to generate and reuse software architectures that is what is the ultimate aim is so these are all the types uh now you just see to it that we traverse from architectural patterns to design patterns to idiom something that is remaining is optimization principle patterns that is documenting the rules for avoiding the common design and implementation mistakes so here to address the degraded performance you correct the design at architecture level or at design level but you can't totally rely on the idioms on the idioms right or there are even the patterns for testing but uh, you cannot uh, include them right at the time of ongoing design so types of design patterns they work around with the abstractions and the level of detailing so high level strategies to medium scale strategies specific and language specific so high level strategies they are uh, architectural uh, capabilities medium scale that is about the design patterns themselves and now just see to it that one more time 
we try to understand this in some different kind of a sense that is uh, architectural patterns they concern about what large scale components that is uh, fat components and the global properties and mechanism so here you can think that it is a container a big container which is consisting of global properties now what you are supposed to do you are getting the interpretation of overall skeletal structure now design patterns they will pick up one of the fragment they will pick up the component they will try to work around with the some of the structures and behaviors entities but they do not overall influence the system structure but they define micro architectures of the subsystems and components now what are subsystems components they are been grouped into modules modules they are been grouped into packages packages they are been grouped into subsystems so if micro architectures are the units at the design patterns architectural patterns makes use of macro architecture m a c r o right m a c r o versus m i c r o macro versus micro architectures idioms are paradigm specific likewise imperative object oriented and so on and so on and then riley and zilligan have presented the patterns into terms of uh, three things conceptual patterns very very similar to architectural patterns so design pattern which consists of object classes inheritance aggregations and programming patterns right or some of the odd times they are called as idioms or coding patterns so components of the pattern now what can be the components of the patterns for writing down the pattern catalog they are having the name the name should be meaningful right alliances what are the other alternatives for this particular pattern then the problem which describes its intent and uh, there is something called as wicket problem now what is a wicket problem wicket problem is the one which is indicating something else okay than something else means what means the forces oppose the objectives the forces oppose the objectives once in a while you are saying something at the other instance you are saying something now what is true out of that we get problem is really a dangerous kind of an thing and for tackling we get problems you should use anti patterns right the context always consists of three conditions that are the conditions that are being assumed by the situation or the problem it tells up patterns applicability where it should be applied for what kind of a problem it should be applied forces forces and constants and how they are being interact conflict with each other and how in turn they affect the goals and objectives so motivation of the pattern has to be first decided and then you can consider the trade offs that is what was being used in previously and uh, what is the current context so there could be tension amongst the you know patterns on who is applicable so that balance has to be kept on so solution solution indicates the structure its participants its collaboration a structure should not only describe static structure but also dynamic behavior so structure is always been you know even though we call them at as flexible as they can but uh, they must address dynamic behavior that is if certain set of inputs the queries are been asked to the system the system should respond to it okay that indicates the dynamics of the system that's the way system come alive and you have to consider the variants okay or uh, 
alternative stuff here. Examples of uh, the patterns, they illustrate specific initial contacts, visual examples and analogies that is known users. It has been related to known users. So sample implementation has always been shown. If you refer to any 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 literature on patterns, you will indicate that how the code fragment has been written, how the design will look like, right? And the resulting contacts. We have considered the contacts which was been based on on precondition. Now resulting consequences is the post conditions. Okay, so. Uh, post conditions and the side effects of the patterns and this is called as resolution of forces because forces and constraints they might conflict it as we have seen it describes which forces have been resolved which one remains unresolved and what can be the possible action on this rationale now this word rationale is a justification justification that has been written for the explanation of the, of the pattern that why a particular pattern is been applicable for which particular situation right and the related patterns there are you know 23 design patterns those come under uh, GOF and uh, how they are been related it is also there the categorization has been completely worked out so, the related patterns can uh, suggest about the predecessor patterns and pattern under consideration and its known uses. Are you having uh, a proven solution? Known uses means in which situation that was been applied and the solution was correct, indeed. So, just to have a recap, we have what name, problem, context, Forces, solution, examples, resulting contacts, rationale, related patterns, and known uses. These are around 12 points, I hope so, that a pattern has been described. In your book, these 12 things were been indicated. Now, pattern quality, as I have mentioned, that it was been there with the encapsulation and abstraction. Yeah. We begin with abstraction, we embody the correct uh, uh, domain knowledge and experience and uh, well-defined problem will of course will have the solution but again if the problem is well-defined the solution should be well-formed that is having correct structure and behavior. Openness and variability open for extension or parameterization by other patterns. That is, one pattern can be intermixed, can be related and with what ease this uh, variance can be caused. So that would depend around on parameterization, okay, what input they take, what output they generate. Generativity and composability is uh, something to deal with uh, some of the elementary uh, relationships amongst the classes that is part whole relationships okay that is uh, parts of the solution builds up the whole solution right uh, patterns are applied by piecemeal growth that is one at a time isn't it and then intermixing wishfully will contaminate the situation equilibrium this equilibrium is about the forces and constraints so that to minimize the conflict in the solution space. So, pattern rules and creativity. Design patterns, common questions are rules aren't commonly supported by a rational nor put up in the context. Just see to it, rule may be the part of solution. Yeah, but uh, Rule solution is neither sufficient nor necessary. So, if you work around on the rule set, then flexibility would be gone. And if you consider one of the thing, likewise aesthetics, then you have to cross the barrier, okay? You have to go about the user interface patterns, right? Uh, 
this date around uh, 200 distinct design patterns are there this figure is not uh, i mean uh, so easy to digest right 200 so this is only about the openly discussed uh, you know pattern elements uh, hidden i don't know i don't have any idea about the same if design is codified in patterns does the need for creativity go away no it uh, doesn't go away high priced expensive designers with less sophisticated programmers who are guided by the patterns the creativity is still needed right even at a, a kind of an cost again the examples of the dressmaker okay for the individual customer has to be creative a lot isn't it and there are a lot many activities that uh, goes in likewise stitching the cloth and etc etc but if the parameters were not been collected by the tailor master then how come the size will be appropriate this is what is the question is even though you have got the sophisticated programmers so less sophisticated programmers okay you do the cutouts isn't it and then stitch them up okay so patterns and algorithms they are very closely associated with each other. Uh, the algorithms and data structures, they solve fine-grained computational problem. Examples are sorting and searching okay, from your dictionary. There are more deterministic than the patterns. So, you are having the complexities which can be mentioned. And again, the theory of... Uh, NPs, right, will come over here and uh, the software developers are need to concern about uh, finding the architectures and uh, how to migrate them to idioms, right. So, moving next, software frameworks, this is something that you are aware of, you may claim. Software framework is a reusable mini architecture. It's a situation that it's not a complete architecture. It's a mini architecture. And the micro architectures will be represented by design patterns as we know. Macro architecture, mini architecture and micro architecture. There is beyond that, you should not do any kind of an effort in structuring the system or addressing the behavior. So, framework works around with the collaboration and works with the family of abstractions that is keeping the needed one discarding the rest keeping the essential information and discarding the diversionary details so virtual machine is in there that has got plug points or they might be called as hotspots so these plug points or hotspots uh, if they are being connected and customized then there could be outlets that can be provided by the framework. So, framework supplies the infrastructure and mechanism. So, this is for simplification of the job, that is realization of the solution. That is uh, by the means of plug points or hotspot. It also recommends hooking principle, right? That is on one kind of a shell, there are multiple hooks which is the thing that is to be hanged on the hook, you can decide, not the hook. Hook doesn't give you uh, any kind of an invitation that uh, uh, this is and this particular kind of stuff has to be hung, isn't it? So, framework is a set of cooperative classes. It provides architectural guidance. A developer customizes the framework. That is the customization could be at black box or white box. For black box it is from the outskirts and for white box you are going inside the structure and then modifying it. So the framework predefines the design parameters, captures the design decisions, emphasize on design reuse that is what is the ultimate aim is over code reuse. The see to its design reuse is quite superior than code reuse because pluggable components 
if you can find easily probably that will result in better designs going next design patterns are more abstract than the framework design patterns are smaller architectural elements than frameworks as i have mentioned about the hierarchies architecture focuses on macro architecture frameworks mini architecture design my design pattern is indicating micro architecture so quam that is quality without a name quam is the quality that is addressing the points resilience life and wholeness balance human comfort and satisfaction and the last part is uh, very much uh, you know uh, interesting emotional and cognitive resonance that is uh, what happens is if i am simplifying the things in too many kind of and general terminologies is, is is whether it will be increasing the readability or too much kind of and dilution will be there so the quam this terminology is been picked up from laws of architecture that is from the physicist perspective right and uh, how to govern the life in the architecture is that that uh, saligaro says that he says that when structures conform to architectural laws those who enter them feel a kind of resonant harmony and almost emotional connection to the structure which feels peaceful and nourishing so therefore there are two qualities one is the extrinsic quality and another one is intrinsic quality so one might take a look at extrinsic quality because it is exterior demonstrated and then intrinsic which is hidden so many of the times we speak about intrinsic quality than extrinsic one uh one in the engineering so it's created when the attributes in the design makes that design live so live means what is capable of handling the static structure and dynamic behavior so quality without a name is the possession of which is ultimate goal of any design product so it is impossible to uh, briefly summarize this so just see to it what alexander presents freedom life wholeness comfortability harmony so if we take up a look at this slide that is life and wholeness human comfort you can straight away compare these points with the points given by sandigaro and alexander now going next pattern language just like there is a programming language and modif modeling language there is something called as pattern language okay that reveals inherent structures and relationships those relationships are existing at multiple levels at architecture level at design level and at coding level so i uh, just see to it that collection of patterns has been described by pattern language and the rules to combine them into an architectural style so we have seen the architectural styles ranging from client server that is two tier to three tier to n tier to interpreter and uh, uh, service oriented architecture and multiple alternatives were been there so moving next is that pop says that good pattern languages they guide the designers towards useful architecture so even though you are having the architecture you are having the design patterns you are having use of uh, frameworks that is you have covered from macro to mini to micro yeah you have to have a kind of an harmony while doing all these three things right macro mini and micro so uh, good architectures they are durable functional aesthetically pleasing 
Now about aesthetics, you have to have a separate kind of a catalog to be referred, which guides the human computer interaction, right? Separate, uh, you know, kind of a patterns are been there. Uh, I haven't made a count of that, but wide range of, uh, you know, patterns are been there available there. And uh, what is important here is that a good pattern language gives designers the freedom to express themselves. You cannot have a congested kind of an design pattern which only one designer understands, rest of the designers do not understand and uh, you are using one nomenclature and others are not using it, then it will become very very difficult to work out with the patterns. Again on pattern language, just see to it, a language, the third point the structure of the language is created by the network of connections among the individual patterns and the language lives. Now, just see to it how the patterns formulate the whole. So, therefore, there is something called as ecological quality. That is, how many times I have applied the design patterns and how many of them are alive. Right, you can degrade in software systems, but software doesn't wear out. So therefore, there is no wearing out principle even applicable for the patterns. Right. Moving next is the pattern catalogs, systems, and languages. Pattern catalog, as it suggests, that it is collection of related patterns which are loosely or informally related and a pattern system is a cohesive set of related patterns which work together to support the construction and evolution of core architectures. So, if you have pattern catalog and pattern system, you can understand at what level you can apply which things, at what level you can apply which thing and pattern language will separate out that at what particular extent you can apply the patterns. Moving next, pattern catalog, what they do? It adds a modicum of structure and organization, visible structures and relationships. Pattern system adds deep structures Deep means uh, how much deep, not more than level 3, there is a level 0, 1, 2, 3, not beyond level 3. Rich pattern interaction, uniformity to a pattern catalog, very very important. Deep structure, rich pattern interaction, uniformity to pattern catalog because there could be uh, a mega pattern okay, as you can see next mega pattern or super pattern in that entire language processes and the shared problems and its context the resulting context rational is being uh, clubbed up this coherence of the purpose okay for having a mega pattern or super pattern which covers up all right you must have heard about super star right and mega star right and super pattern and mega pattern seriously mega pattern is superior than super pattern we must know here one more point likewise it could be having meta pattern as well that is pattern about pattern so that is the another way to work out with the pattern language. A pattern has got meta pattern that is bounded by super pattern and all of the super patterns are covered up by mega pattern. So this is the hierarchy. One more time I repeat it. Pattern, meta pattern, super pattern and mega pattern. So about mega pattern, not much of a literature is available. Even with the meta pattern, information is insufficient as far as uh, 
the syntactic derivation of the language is required to be done. Uh, just see to it writing patterns, how to write the patterns. Okay? Uh, you can also write your own pattern is it if you have practiced the pattern. So something called as pattern mining. Keeping the again uh, principle is the same, discarding the rest. Focus on practicability. Aggressive disregard of originality. Non-anonymous review. Writer's workshop. And careful editing. These things are very much uh, important in articulating the pattern write-ups. So, pattern mining, reverse architecting, you must know that up till now we have seen forward architecting that is from architecture to the uh, frameworks to design patterns to idiom. Now you start up with the idioms, go back to design pattern, uh, patterns and then to the framework and then to the architecture which is uh, uh, encompassing architecture and style something. Now, what are the changes in HEMA? I was saying to you about the hierarchy HEMA. Just see to it now. Abstraction is related to what? Shall we work around on outside in again? Abstraction to hierarchy to modularity to encapsulation. So now here we have to form some different kind of an hierarchy. Abstraction to modularity to flexibility to elegance. What I have said, just repeat it. Abstraction, modularity, flexibility and elegance. That is A-M-F-E. A-M-F-E. Then H-E-M-A. Right? So, there is an uh, example there, okay, about the client and server, okay, so there are two server side and client side brokers, two brokers are being there, one is the client proxy, another one is the application component, so registrations, once it has been done, then the network is open for interconnecting between the client and the application component. So, what is the problem here? In working around with AMFE principle, AFME, capturing, communicating, applying, and then time and effort and risk, and then benefits of the patterns, design reuse, uniform design vocabulary, that is lexicon, basis for automation, you can automate, okay, also forward engineer, the design patterns, the code limitations, significant tedious and error prone human effort to handcraft the pattern, descriptively simple uniform design vocabulary, may limit the design option. So, what actually you want to do is actually you are doing, that is what is, is important here. So, addressing the limitation of patterns requires more than just design reuse okay so one cannot start applying okay this pattern i have applied once in a while i should stick to this particular pattern okay this is a very bad idea to do it so frameworks how they are being categorized first see to the three uh, important aspect not to forget they address mini architectures they work around on Inversion of control, it's a principle, very, very big principle. It would have required 10 minimum slides, okay, to explain this principle, right? Inversion of control at runtime via callbacks. That is to work out with the dynamic behavior at the call and reply kind of a pattern. It provides integrated domain specific structure and functionality and it's a semi-complete application. So you can see the different branches here. Scientific visualization, GUI, database, e-commerce, networking, 
and mission computing now which is the supreme kind of an thing scientific visualization e commerce mission computing these are the big guns and then you can have application specific functionality and this is just an example might not be visible just uh, try to see to it that there are product variants isn't it product variants 1 2 3 4 here yeah. <coughs> and this is an layered architecture based around on linux as a kernel standard parts are hardware okay the interfacing you can see some of things okay of nvidia android run time product line architecture okay and so and so on so it uh, works around with both the things frameworks general purpose and domain specific so essential for product line architectures that is pla which requires plm product uh, uh, life cycle management and then product line is a different kind of an area altogether should be considered as a course yeah so white box uh, frameworks i discussed earlier on are used by sub classing which usually requires understanding the implementation of the framework to some degree black box just modify it from the exterior by parameterizing and assembling the framework objects so you can have abstract class then concrete class right so inheritance principle is used right and black box we have what a strategy which is a kind of an behavioral design pattern from gif you supply the context right the strategy has been uh, adopted algorithmic interface has been generated to concrete strategy 1 2 3 so they reply heavily on uh, object composition pattern such as strategy and decorator decorator uh, you can see that from the exterior it will only mark the behavior so they fall in between white box and black box so pure forms are discouraged that is purely white box and purely black box they are discouraged so now there is an you know scv scope commonalities and variability analysis so you have got the reusable components in one particular layer right scv again to remember you earlier on we were been uh, knowing scope cost time sct now it is scv scope commonalities and variabilities for patterns and you can have reusable architecture framework right you can have home contacts phone and browser so and so on so uh linux kernel i hope so the figure is visible so linux kernel and then the application framework and then the applications that is phone email browser lot many things are there what why not whatsapp yes of course whatsapp is also there yeah, don't worry right instagram facebook right activity manager is been there windows manager location manager in the second layer yeah for the framework and you can make use of hooking probably hooking isn't it has been explained to you earlier on as well so commonalities scope and purpose and context these three are interrelated stuff commonalities they describe uh, the attributes that are common across all the member of frameworks right so uh, you can have the window manager content providers being the systems core library and then you can have sql lite and surface manager okay that is libraries you want to install and use bluetooth drivers right from the linux kernel flash memory driver audio drivers right so driver management is there with the kernel applications they should simply use the downwards layers now another thing is that that uh, product uh, dependent uh, component implementation motorola htc samsung why not apple iphone cs of course the country specific uh, you know cdma gsm utilizations isn't it maybe there 
hardware and OS network bus configurations they could be also existent now the C to it real technique class libraries and STL the class libraries and the STL architecture that is a class is implementation unit in now but it is a reusable type and classes in class libraries are typically passive so you need to activate them okay you need to activate them right to applic to work out with the application specific functionality now framework architecture we have seen again okay so the uh, functionalities is driven by networking gui database integrated uh, set of classes and which implements pattern languages and the third thing is uh, how the interaction happens is that is the component and service oriented architecture that is uh, services have to be registered they should be having locking principles based around on the events the call to the service has been given so agreements uh, uh, would be mentioned here you can see over here uh, lollipops okay lollipops yeah and this is the lollipop and socket notation so here correct socket has been found out so communication has been happening right yeah so these are all the ports which guides the communication so that is the communication done through the middleware bus and uh, then taxonomy of reuse technique we are coming towards the closure of uh, this presentation on introduction to patterns class libraries frameworks and components class libraries they work around on micro level kind of and reuse framework meso level and components macro level so just see to it meso level means that frameworks are semi complete applications you have to complete them as far as your needs go on and uh, for micro and macro stand alone composition entities stand alone language entities they are because uh, you will be using idioms in case of uh, implementing the class libraries so class libraries are domain dependent components could be domain specific or domain independent but frameworks are domain specific so a framework which is been there for a particular purpose will not be available for the another uh, specific domain so easily so class libraries they implement borrow follow thread and work out with the mechanism that is been called in frameworks they work around an inversion of control and again in case of uh, components the same kind of in principle likewise with the class libraries that is borrow follow thread and then get the call done yeah the next thing is limitations of framework frameworks are powerful there is no doubt about that that they are powerful and uh, can be hard to use effectively but what is more <laughs> kind of and stuff than that they are even harder to create so one single framework okay dot net is an example of that creation of that requires time it requires you know uh, identification of services identification of elements of system structures so that the quality that you expect from a framework do exist debugging is tricky right debugging is programmers domain debugging debugging is not testers domain debugging is programmers domain so that's why it is uh, taking inversion of control into uh, you know consideration you are all advised to take a note of this principle inversion of control principle here yeah, as a part of work and vnv is tricky verification and validation due to late binding because unless and until we work around with the uh, meso level things how they are been actually been implemented realizable so that would indicate the 
date binding we have to wait till we see the result in practicality or in experimentation and what about the maturity many frameworks limitations can be addressed with the knowledge of patterns okay so if you are knowledgeable entity in patterns you know better usage of frameworks so architectural styles if you are aware if you are aware about uh, the frameworks and design patterns your efforts for applying the coding patterns will be reduced significantly there will be limited kind of an rework right that you can apply and uh, observations that is to use that is the frameworks are powerful they are used for pots framework that is common of the shelf frameworks common of the shelf frameworks right and this is the story this is the story this is the history successful projects are therefore often organized using the panel model right that is build it build it build it till it fills build it build it build it till it fills right likewise uh, pots framework technology customized framework technologies component middleware technologies and at the end component scripting and modeling technologies so modeling technologies they are coming up likewise uml all of the scripting languages and the components that you know or you take it the help from the others they will be at the very surface level right so now posa 2 what is posa pattern oriented software architecture it came in five volumes all these five volumes we have physical copies we have five volumes five big books right but only limited edition we are considering that is only 23 pattern right so this is from the posa 2 patterns there is posa 1 also there is networking which has been suggested in posa 3 right and so and so on so patterns uh, summary you can have the expertise by reusable algorithms yeah reusable architectural design themes you can apply just like in case of posa we have seen just previous slides and lastly middleware it's the job of middleware probably in sequence if i remember uh, this we have seen earlier on or just see to it this is a simple client server kind of an uh, application with the orb object resource broker there is iiop and then the dynamic static scheduling and application specific functionalities with the use of patterns so this is what is is the awareness first thing which is best to do is ignore the patterns is ignore the patterns then concertation initiation understanding familiarity and benefit just see the mass scale benefit of learning patterns right so those who are unaware about design patterns the cup of tea is not even half filled so with this comments we come up to the end of the 